What's up guys? My name is Lauren and welcome back to my channel. My subscriber Elizabeth has $220,000 of debt and she really wants to get this paid off. So let's break it down and see what we can do to help her figure that out. This is the first episode in a new series I'm starting on my channel called Debt Confessions. So this is Elizabeth's debt confession. I asked you guys a little while ago if you'd want to submit your own numbers and have me do a debt confession anonymously for you in one of my videos so I can break down the numbers and use you as a case study for other people to see other numbers besides my own since I just talk about my own debt numbers. So thank you Elizabeth for submitting your numbers and then emailing with me afterwards to give me a little more information. I am really excited for you because I really relate to your situation. So let me give you a breakdown of Elizabeth. Elizabeth is 36 and I will be 36 next month. And she is also a lawyer and she has a toddler and an infant. So we have all those things in common. Obviously I have retired from the practice of law and just have my business now, but just, I relate a lot to Elizabeth because also she has multiple six figure debt. And that is where we started just a few short years ago. So Elizabeth also lives in the Pacific Northwest, which is a high cost of living area. And I also live in a high cost of living area. Area. So just so many similarities where I can empathize with your situation. As I mentioned, her current debt total for her and her husband is $220,000 and her household income is high though. It's $250,000, but their take home pay is about 180. So high debt, but high income. So, you know, they've got some options here. They do have an emergency fund of $40,000. And she did tell me that back in 2020, they had $20,000 of credit card debt that they did pay off. So I I know between the fact that they've paid off $20,000 of credit card debt before and the fact that they have a $40,000 emergency fund is this is not the first time that they've been working on this. Elizabeth and her husband know how to put money aside to save and also to pay off debt. So I'm really optimistic about what they're gonna be able to do over the next few years. Hi, Lauren from One Hour in the Future popping in here real quick. I realized I forgot to explain something really important about Elizabeth's situation is her and her husband make commissions or like bonuses based on performance at work. And so they do get a base salary, but their income fluctuates greatly greatly month to month. So one of the things she's working on is trying to find a way to be more consistent with their payments each month because some months they're not able to do much and then other months they're able to make bigger payments. So they are making, you know, extra payments on their debt. It's just not consistent every single month. And so that's something that she wants to try to work on. Elizabeth did say that they're only currently investing $50 a month because when their infant started going to daycare, it just got too expensive. And so the money is going to daycare costs. And and her goals are to get out of debt, get a bigger house, save for retirement, and save for her children's education. She also mentioned to me that she could make more money if she changed jobs, but she likes the flexibility of her current job having two young kids. So let's take a look at the numbers in my debt payoff spreadsheet. If you like this spreadsheet, you can get it for yourself. It will be linked in the video description. It is instant download to Google Sheets and it comes with a detailed video tutorial. Okay, so here are all of Elizabeth's debts or her and her husband's debts. The first one is a credit card with 22% interest that has a balance of $2,500. The next one is another credit card that has a balance of 7,000 with an 18% interest rate. The next one is another credit card at 7,500 with a 19% interest rate and a fourth credit card at 13,000 with a 19% interest rate. They have two car loans. The first one is 11,600 that's at about four and a half percent interest. And the second one is at 18,400 that's at about 5% interest. And then they have a large student loan at 160,000 at 3.17% interest. So it's kind of funny because with their debts, it's basically, you know, I put them smallest to largest, which would be debt snowball order if you paid them down in that order. But also, this is actually basically debt avalanche because the interest rates are largest to smallest with the exception of this 18% that should really be after the credit card for, but I mean, credit card interest rates fluctuate anyway and it's so close. So whether they did debt snowball, which is paying the lowest balance debt first or debt avalanche, which is paying the highest interest rate debt first, it would basically be the same order for them. So all of those debts total up to $220,000. 
And that is a big overwhelming number. And Elizabeth did express to me that she kind of feels embarrassed to have this much debt and have her budget be so tight. She said she's struggling to find extra money to pay off this debt, despite the fact that they make good income. And she said that feels kind of embarrassing. So I just wanted to share Elizabeth, I felt embarrassed about my debt when we first started paying off debt. If any of you guys have felt embarrassed about your debt or the fact that you can't find money in your budget to pay off debt, comment below and let Elizabeth know that she is not alone. It's a very common feeling and the further progress you make in this, the more that feeling goes away. But this is a really hard situation. Having two young kids and full-time childcare is extremely expensive. You know, cost of living is expensive. You live in a high cost of living area and college costs way too much and you went to law school. So law school is extremely expensive. So all these debts that you are paying every month are really hurting your budget. And especially these high interest debts are, you know, you're paying tons of interest on them and that's really slowing down your progress in paying off debt. So let's talk about payments and where she goes from here. So she said that generally the payments are about three to 4,000 a month. I totaled everything up from what she had shared with me and got about $4,000 a month that they're paying towards their debts every single month. Between their credit cards, she said they're paying a little over $1,000 a month in payments, and then their two car loans also are a little over $1,000 a month, and then the student loan is $2,000 a month. So this goes without saying, and Elizabeth knows this because she's a lawyer, but I'm gonna say it anyway, and that is this is actually not advice. This is just me brainstorming through the different options I see for Elizabeth and her family, and it's up to them to make the decision on what to to do or to choose to do something totally different from the different ideas I come up with. But again, this is, you know, we're looking at her specific numbers, but this is not me saying this is what she should or shouldn't do. This is just me talking through different opportunities I see and options that they may have to make their debt pay up more efficient and more successful. So the first thing that I thought of when I saw all these credit card debts is doing what we did with our credit card debt and consolidating them with a personal loan. Because if you have decent credit, usually you can cut the interest rate in half half or so with a personal loan. She's paying between 18 and 22% on these credit cards. And if she could get maybe a 10 or 12 or even 14% interest rate, that would cut back the amount of interest significantly. Now, the risk with doing that is if you get a personal loan, what happens is you apply for the personal loan for whatever amount of money you want, let's say it's the total of her credit card debt, which is $30,000, you get a lump sum payment from the loan company for $30,000 into your checking account. You then have to take responsibility and actually pay off all the credit cards with that personal loan so you don't have any more balances on the credit cards. You're not paying any more interest on the credit cards. And then you have to also be responsible in not charging those credit cards back up because then you could end up with a situation where you have the personal loan, but your credit card balances will be at zero. So if they were maxed out before, you need to not then go use the credit cards again and max them out because then you'll really be in trouble. But that's kind of like a basic thing that you need to do when starting a debt-free journey is commit to not taking on any new debt. And that shift, once you can make that shift, that's when everything changes. And it's the hardest thing to do and it's the first thing you need to do. So I feel like that's why a lot of people don't get started, but you really have to commit 100% unless there's an emergency that you are not gonna take on any new debt. So if Elizabeth and her husband can commit to not taking on any new debt and take this debt payoff really seriously starting right now, then I think a personal loan would be a good idea. I don't really like balance transfers between credit cards. There's an option sometimes to get a 0% interest on a new credit card. There's a balance transfer fee, but then you have a promotional rate of 0% on that credit card. But it's really risky because usually those promotional rates are only for like six or 12 months, sometimes 18 months. But if you don't pay off the whole balance during that time, then you're back up to a high interest rate and you need to be careful and look really carefully at the terms on these promotional rates because sometimes if you don't pay off the entire balance by the time the rate expires, then you owe interest back to the original balance, not just whatever's left on the credit card. So I just feel like it's a little bit too risky, especially if you are not like really well practiced in not getting into credit card debt, which somebody who's doing a balance transfer probably isn't because they're in credit card debt. So that's another option, but I like it less than the personal loan because of that reason. There's just more risks with it, with 
with the promotional rate and also you then have a balance on a credit card and for somebody who's been in credit card debt myself I had thirty thousand dollars of credit card debt more than thirty thousand I think I got up to thirty three I just needed to put the credit cards away all together and not even touch them for a long period of time before I can even trust myself to like use them for any sort of points or anything like that. So it's funny because when I was emailing with Elizabeth, she updated me and she said since she had originally submitted her numbers for the debt confession series, they had actually done just that. They got a personal loan. So for the $30,000 of credit card debt they had, they got a personal loan of $25,000 and then they used $5,000 from their $40,000 emergency fund and paid it all off. So now their emergency fund is at 35,000 and they have a personal loan of 25,000. So let me show you how I entered that into the spreadsheet so you can see how that works if you do this and get a personal loan and your debts change around. Okay, so I added a line here for the personal loan. The rate is 10.24%. So she basically cut her interest rate in half, which is great. That's gonna help cut back on the amount of money that's going towards interest and make their progress go faster. And then over here, they paid off these four credit cards. You know, like I said, 25,000 was this personal loan and then 5,000 from the emergency fund. So you can see the amount they paid towards debt in February was around $9,000 because they did take that extra 5,000 from their emergency fund and put it towards debt. So February was a good debt payoff month for them, paying all the minimums plus an extra 5,000 from the emergency fund. And so they paid approximately $7,500 of principal. They did pay 1688 in interest, but as you can see for the next month, that's gonna be a little bit lower. So again, I'm estimating you know, how much their debts went down by the different information she told me about them. So Elizabeth might have to adjust these numbers a little bit to the actual numbers when I send this to you. And that's part of this debt confession series. I send you this debt payoff spreadsheet at the end of it. And so you can use it going forward as you continue on your debt-free journey. And I do that for free as a thank you for submitting your numbers and allowing me to share them on my channel. Okay, so starting out in March, they had no more credit card debt, they just have the personal loan of 25,000, the two car loans, which have been paid down a little bit from the minimum payments. And again, the student loan for making a minimum payment paid down as well. So down to $212,525. So I'm making some assumptions for April because we're not in April yet, but if they just pay their minimum payments for March, then here's where they'll end up for April. So they'll pay $3,567 in minimum payments of that 2,825 will go towards principal and 742 will go towards interest. So that's a significant improvement on how much money is going towards interest because they did that personal loan. Um, I will put a link below. I think NerdWallet has a list of personal loans where you can look at all the rates and stuff and see like, you know, what some options are. We did our personal loan with SoFi. I know SoFi is not popular right now because they sued the government to restart student loan payments and people are not happy about that. That's a topic for another day, but we did have a good experience with them for our personal loan, not recommending them or not recommending them. I'm just telling you what we did back in 2020 when we did our personal loan. But there's many different companies out there if there's a certain one you don't wanna work with. So just by paying the minimum payments, they're already at 3,500 they were closer to 4,000, but they're still at 3,500 for minimum payments. So the minimum payments did go down and they're paying less interest by doing that personal loan, but they'll still have almost $210,000 of debt as of April 1st. And that's a lot of debt. They do have high income. Like I said, they bring home about 180, but they have two young kids and daycare and everything. So Elizabeth did share some things with me about her budget and I had a couple of ideas for them. My first suggestion to her is to try to find just like two or $300 that you can cut out of your budget from spending you're doing right now. You know, whether it's cutting out cable, cutting back on subscriptions, cutting back on how often you like, you know, buy makeup and clothing and get your hair cut and colored and all that kind of stuff. I know it's really hard to cut back on those things and especially, you know, I, I remember when I was a lawyer working in a firm and making good money, I felt like there was this expectation that people had that I would have money to do all these things and so I needed to do all these things. But the thing is, you guys are actually broke. Like you are using 99% of your money every single month to just pay for your expenses, your miscellaneous spending, and 
your debt. And the reason you're so broke is because you have so much debt. And so until you're not totally broke, you don't have money to be spending a lot on these extra things. Now, I don't think cutting everything out bare bones is healthy either because I find when I did that, then I swing back in the other direction and overspend because I like deprive myself too much. So you want to find a healthy balance here of being smart with your money and being careful with how you spend and you know, cutting back what you can, but not taking it too far. So if you have a bunch of subscriptions and you have Hulu and Netflix and, you know, Disney Plus and all these different things, maybe just cut back to one or two and alternate based on what shows you're watching. Maybe call your insurance company and see if you can get your car insurance lowered by 25 or 50 bucks. And I know when you're making huge amounts of money, like you're making multiple six figures, it seems silly to try to cut back something by $25 or $50. But the thing with this debt payoff is it really does as snowball so every extra dollar you can find at the beginning when you're paying really high interest goes really far when you're paying 10% interest on a personal loan even paying an extra 25 or 50 dollars really can help push you forward that much faster and I've also found as you start cutting things out then you see other opportunities to cut things out because you get used to living more in the way of how can I minimize and simplify my life rather than how can I buy more stuff to simplify my life. And that shift really helps with the budgeting as well when it comes to groceries and just, you know, all kinds of things, activities and things. So that's one idea I had. And even if you just challenge yourself to find an extra hundred dollars the first month and maybe 200 the next month and just see where you can get the budget to. Cutting back only goes so far. And so a lot of times I suggest making more income as a way to pay off debt faster. But in your case, you said you have a really good work-life balance with your job. And I don't think you have an income problem. I think 250,000 is enough to live comfortably. I think you have a debt problem. I think once you get that credit card, card debt and those car loans paid off, things are really going to open up even when you still have that student loan because those debts are just have such high payments and such higher interest rates that they're just really killing you on your budget. The other thing I noticed in what you sent me is you said you do contribute to your kids 529s. It's only a couple hundred a month, but something that we did during our debt-free journey is we stopped contributing to our kids' education. We only put money that is gifted to our children into those accounts. So, you know, if you have friends or family that give money for birthdays or holidays or whatever, then we still put that money in their 529s. But until we're debt-free and we're on track with saving for our own retirement, we cut that out. And so that is helped us move faster too to paying off our debt it's kind of like that saying you know when you're on an airplane put on your own oxygen mask before putting on others you want to make sure you get your own debt under control you want to make sure that your own retirement savings is on track but when you're only doing 50 to your own retirement and you're putting some to your kids 529s it's something you might want to consider you know again this is not advice this is just things that we did and things to think about is you may want to put that money towards your own retirement or towards paying off the personal loan and just go really hard all in on the debt for a year or so and see where you end up and then reevaluate. Because again, during the debt-free journey, you don't do the same thing the whole way along. When you have a large amount of debt and it's gonna take you a number of years to pay it off, different points in life you feel differently so when we started paying off debt we didn't contribute anything to retirement investing or anything like that for the first year then we did 15 percent the next year then we bumped it down to like eight to ten percent for the third year and this year who knows where we'll end up but you feel differently along the way and so i feel like at the beginning it really helps to kind of go all in on the debt especially when you've got that personal loan at 10 percent get that really high interest debt paid off and see how you feel after you get that paid off before you make any adjustments. Like I said, Elizabeth and her husband already paid off $20,000 of credit card debt. Now that was back in 2020 before they had their infant or maybe even their toddler because we're in 2023 now. So when you have daycare costs, you know, they pay $3,000 a month for daycare costs. That's more than their mortgage. And so that is a huge expense. One thing to keep in mind too is that's not an expense forever unless you're sending your kids to private school that will end at some point for your toddler in the next two or three years so whatever you can do to push hard in the next couple years while you have that double daycare payment you know will get much easier once your older child goes to kindergarten because you won't have that second daycare cost and if you've got a bunch of your debt paid off by then you will really open things up. And then typically people make more money as they get further into their careers. So if you're making a little bit more at that point, you're not paying for a second child in daycare and you've got some of your debt paid off, you are gonna be in really good shape at that point. So just to circle back to the debt payoff spreadsheet for one second, if it were me, this is actually the second highest balance debt now, this personal loan. 
and it has the highest interest rate. So there's a couple reasons why I think it makes sense to pay that one off first. And then I would go for the car loans. Personally, I would do the smaller one first and then the larger one, just because the payments are similar amounts. They both are about 500 a month and they have similar interest rates. So I would just go for the smaller one because it'll just go quicker. And then I would do your next car loan. And then last I would hit the student loans. They've got the lowest interest rate. They've got the largest balance. And I wouldn't put a single dollar extra to those student loans before you get these other smaller debts paid off. Because once you get the smaller debts paid off, those payments, the minimum payments, which total to about $1,500, will really open up your progress to do other things. And at that point, you may wanna pay down the student loan fast, or you may decide to slow pay it and put more money towards retirement or put more money towards the kids college accounts and things like that so that's kind of the order that we did things in you know I think no matter what you do if you're paying down your debt balance and not taking on any new debt every single month you're succeeding and you're doing it right so whatever order that feels right to you and your family is what you should do but that's kind of you know the order that we did in on our own debt-free journey so that is it for episode one of debt confessions I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope you got some good information out of it for your own debt-free journey. If you like this kind of reasoning and me talking through this and the different information that I shared in this video, I actually shared a lot more just like this in my debt payoff course. It's called Ditching Your Debt Once and For All, and it is a comprehensive debt payoff course that talks about debt payoff, budgeting, investing for retirement, mindset, going into a debt-free journey, and much more. It comes with this debt payoff spreadsheet and my budget spreadsheet, and it is an on-demand course. So you go through each of the eight sections and complete the workbook assignments to start your own debt-free journey at your own pace, and I will link that in the video description as well. If you would like to be featured in an episode of Debt Confessions on my channel, then I will link below how to submit your numbers. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.